name is Nicole. I live in a 32-foot gooseneck tiny house on a property near San Francisco in the East Bay of California. I found this ranch-type property on Craigslist, and I'm fortunate to have uh, two tiny house neighbors. So I live here with my dog, Poppy. She's a Jack Russell Dachshund mix. Because we're out in the rural area, we have a lot of foxtails, so I actually have a foxtail hood uh, for my dog. So the house was built by Mitch Craft uh, out in Colorado in Fort Collins and then it was trucked out here by a moving company. The design of the outside was actually woke up, just had a thought, jotted it down on paper. Knew that I wanted cedar accent. I, I definitely wanted to go two-tone with the house, and I was trying to figure out how to do that, and then I ended up with two different designs, one that was a herringbone, and then one that was the mountains that are on the back of the house. And originally I had drawn the mountains on the front, but I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it, so I was like, well, I'll put it on the back just in case. Lo and behold, where I'm parked now, I drive up to the mountains to the back of the house every time, but I love it, and so I'm really glad that I get to showcase and see both sides of the house. Do you wanna come inside out of the wind? Let's go. Welcome inside. The main reasons I went tiny were so that I could design it myself and put my spatial planning skills to the test and to live in the Bay Area, um, which is cost prohibitive, uh, but also to be able to leave if I wanted to. So I've always had a passion for spatial planning and when I started the process of thinking and dreaming to go tiny, I was usually sketching out a layout and I've spent many a night sitting bolt up in my bed, trying out a new layout, figuring out that it was fine, and then going back to bed. <laughs> I don't think there is an inch of this house that wasn't planned out um, or used for something. So this is my kitchen. It has everything that a normal house would. Three-quarter or apartment-sized fridge, a gas burner that runs off propane, and this beauty is a three-in-one. It's a microwave oven as well as a convection oven and it's the range hood. So it does everything that I need it to. I went with the glass cabinets because I felt like it opened the space a little instead of hiding everything away. I also wanted to give it some different dimension and all of the cabinets on the bottom were just wood paneled. So I put glass on there. One of the great things I found out about having the glass cabinets is that it allows me to put different designs up there. So I actually, for the holidays, bought window clings and decorated the cabinets with leaves and snowflakes for the different seasons. And I looked into getting ones for spring, but I haven't found any that I like yet. So I actually love washing dishes, but I need a window to do that. So the way that I organized designed the layout of the kitchen was to be able to have a window uh, outside of where the sink is so that I can look at the beautiful scenery, which I'm thankful to have on this property. I also decided that because the kitchen seamlessly flows into the living room and I knew that I was going to have a couch on the other end, I didn't want water runoff because let's be honest, that's what happens is water runoff. Uh, so I designed it to have this taller cabinet here so that anything that, any splashing that happens in the sink gets contained to the kitchen and that helps to actually define the two spaces a little bit better. Because of the massive size of this sink, I wasn't going to have any uh, side piece, there wasn't going to be any edge to where the sink was. So Mitch put in this little piece of a cabinet here and wasn't sure what to do with it when I first got it, but I quickly found out that this is the perfect size to have the pot lids, the cookie sheets, and then also the rack that turns the microwave oven into a convection oven. As if it actually turns it into an oven, it doesn't. It just puts the rack in. <laughs> it doesn't make it an oven. <laughs> Voila, it's an oven. I got a lot of inf inspiration for the design of the tiny house um, and the different uses of space was pull out pantries. So I wanted to make sure that I incorporated 
um, the pull-out pantries and this spot because I was creating a division of the space seemed to be the best place to put it and so I can store all the medicines, band-aids, first aid, cleaning supplies, Costco's sized box of trash bags. It, it, it works really well and it's just super fun to play with because um, it comes out to you and you don't have to dig into the cabinets to find, find anything. So these chairs uh, are wonderful because they fold up and they are bar height because So I wanted it to be counter height one because I liked the idea of the bar stools and, and doing something different and being able to kind of half, half sit, half stand and have the extra counter space and not have to stoop to, to use it. The size of the table was actually inspired by puzzles. Uh, puzzles uh, take up a large amount of space. So I started with that and figured that if it could fit a puzzle, it could also fit a game night, a dinner night, uh, crafting, I work from here. This this table serves so many purposes. And I had the option, it could go two ways, where I could have had it mounted on the wall so that it would tuck up and be flush with where the wheel well comes out. Or I could build storage up above the wheel well and then push the table out. And because I know that every time I've ever had a table, stuff usually ends up on it, I opted to have the storage underneath because it also meant that part of the table was always there to put things down on, which is uh, a benefit and a drawback at the same time. In the house, I had to plan for everything and one of those things was trash and I didn't want just a freestanding trash bin. So we put in this uh, trash cabinet that pulls out Originally, I had actually wanted to make it smaller and have the trash and recyclables um, in front of each other, but because of the wheel well, we couldn't, we couldn't go that far back. So what Mitch did was he built this cabinet that sits over the wheel well. So instead of having them in front of each other, they're side by side, and then I have this whole space behind it to use for cleaning products, the Swiffers, bags, extra things. This is the living room and I wanted to make sure that I had a lot of storage but that I could conceal it if I wanted to so there is storage under the kitchen table and then continued on there's this whole bookcase that allows for easy access to storage. I wanted to make sure that I had a space where I could come and relax and make it nice and open I did some research and I found Home Reserve, which is a modular couch. It comes kind of flat packed, almost like Ikea would. You put it all together yourself uh, and you can choose whatever fabric or style that you want. But the two bonuses that I really love about the couch is that it's modular so I can rearrange it. This is probably the fifth or sixth orientation that I've had with this couch, which is awesome because it means that Despite living in a tiny house, I can still redesign and, and make the space feel new again. If I wanted to, I could also get all new fabric um, really easy, just shipped out, and I could change the color and style of this couch, no problem. The other great feature of this couch is that there is storage under every cushion. You just take the cushion out, and then I have games in this one, and then under this cushion, I have uh, my hammock, heating pad, some extra things, some hand warmers for when it gets really cold. In the corner, I have a bunch of house items and things that I need for patching or, or anything like that. And then in the ottoman actually has the most storage and in there I have all of my tools and um, some luggage bags, etc. I'm an analytical thinker and I wanted to know what all my options were. So I went on Instagram and I saved a lot of posts and I followed a lot of tiny house builders and a lot of tiny house dwellers. I followed you and I put together just kind of like mood boards of what I was looking for. Got a lot of ideas for how to do storage, how to do lofts, how to do ladders or stairs. Then I was like, well, I'm gonna have to find a builder. So I did what any person should do that has ever been in Excel and I made a spreadsheet. And I put a, yes, I put a spreadsheet together of 
oh, I don't know, close to two dozen, I think, builders um, with all kinds of things from location to the certifications that they build to, what their base model price was, if they had a model that I, that I was fond of, all kinds of information. And so I ended up with kind of a top tier of builders that I was looking at. And then I, I found Mitch and I went out to Colorado and I visited. Not only did he have like an attention to detail, like the craftsmanship, when you walk into the homes, you're just like, this is a home. And that's the kind of building style that I wanted to go for. And he was also a great partner. Every question I asked, he had an answer for. There was another builder that I had visited as well, um, but they couldn't answer questions about what insulation they were using. Um, I could see holes and, and gaps in, in their builds. So when I visited Mitch, it just, everything came together. He also told me that he lived in a tiny as well. And it wasn't a major requirement for me, but it definitely was a plus from everything that I've heard about hiring a builder to build your house. You want someone who has experience because um, they'll catch something, um, which he did. <laughs> he definitely caught things before we did them. Thanks to Trade Coffee for sponsoring this video. We love to travel and we love coffee, but when we're not on the road, Trade allows us to take a coffee tour of America right from our tiny house kitchen. Trade matches you to your own personal selection of coffee and ships straight from the roastery at peak freshness. But how does it work? Step one, take the quiz. Answer questions about how you like your coffee and Trade will curate matches just for you. Step two, Choose your delivery frequency and your coffee will appear at your doorstep and it comes in a sweet compostable package. Step three, don't forget to rate your matches so Trade can continue to delight you with coffees you'll love. We tried espresso from Sight Glass in LA and it has delicious chocolatey notes. Mmm, so good. Get 50% off your first bag when you sign up and you get free shipping too. Offer valid for the first 100 people to click our link in the description below. Trade guarantees you'll love your first coffee, but if you don't, they'll ship you out a different bag for free. Just take the quiz and enter code TINYHOUSE50. Above me is my secondary loft. Yes, it's my second loft. Uh, it's taken many forms for what it gets used for, but right now it's my work from home office. You access it by a ladder, which I designed with the help of my builder to roll up into the loft. This was two reasons, uh, so that it's concealed uh, and it fits very nicely in between these joists. Uh, the other reason was I didn't want it to be freestanding. Uh, I wanted to klutz proof my house and I felt that if I had a freestanding ladder, I would put it through a window. The idea was it would fit nicely between the joists uh, and it would pull forward and then down and that's how it would it would work, it'd be on a track. Um, but, so the top of the ladder sits on skateboard wheels that roll on this aluminum track that sits in between the joists and it's held up just on the bottom end with eye hooks. This is my office. I work from home now, uh, remote. So it's been really nice to have like a dedicated workspace uh, where I can both keep my work things and then also keep kind of the mental space up here. In a former life, I was a dog trainer. So Poppy and I have worked on several things that have helped with living here on the ranch and living in the tiny house. Um, one of them being making sure that she's comfortable with the hood before we go outside. And another is making sure that she's safe when we go up into the loft while I'm working. Before we go into the loft, I want to make sure that she actually wants to go into the loft, so I will ask her. And then if she decides that she wants to go with me, she will put her paws on the ladder to go up. Pops, you want to go upstairs? Yeah, you do. Come on. So behind this door is my bathroom. It's actually really big for a tiny house. Uh, it's actually pretty big for a regular house. Uh, it's bigger than some of my friends' master bathrooms in their house. And it has everything that you need. 
I opted to not go with a tub because I think I've taken a bath twice in my adult life. Uh, so all I needed was a shower. It was uh, interesting because there was actually a mistake when it was ordered. The shower pan, the walls um, actually came shorter than my builder was expecting. So he asked me, he said, can we fill it with tile? And I exuberantly said, yes, we can fill it with tile. Uh, so we picked out this tile um, at the store, which kind of really brings it all together. And I'm actually really glad that that happened because it's one of my favorite features of the bathroom. This is the separate villa. It's a composting toilet. I wanted to go with a composting toilet over a flushing toilet in case the parking spot that I found for my house didn't have sewer. So the reason that I did this big sink was so that I could use it for all the functions that I need to and also have counter space to set things down because I didn't want to be having to balance it on the toilet seat or uh, anything like that. And these drawers go back pretty far. They go all the way down and so it houses everything and more. I've even started to put some things in here that don't belong in the bathroom simply because it, there's better storage in here. One of the dilemmas I had in the bathroom was wanting to have a mirror and a window. I wanted the window to create natural light and then also to make it feel more open. But because of the way that the toilet is situated um, under the gooseneck, there couldn't be a window on that wall. My only other option was to put the window above the sink, which is great when you're doing dishes, but when you need to do makeup or see how you look in the mirror, the window doesn't help with that. So we, decided that we were going to put in a medicine cabinet uh, inset into the wall and rather than have the mirror on the outside of the medicine cabinet we put it on the inside and mitch did an excellent job of sizing it so that it covers the full window and because it opens i can then adjust the natural light while i'm doing my makeup and i can also bring it closer to my face without having to lean over so there was a lot of great benefits to doing it this way. And most of the time I just leave it open. And there's a group of people that believe that there's, um, that tiny house dollars are moochers, that you're not contributing to society or the community and that, you know, you're skirting the system when in actuality, all I'm doing is renting a room outside of the landlord's house. So I'm not damaging her property. I'm not, you know, I don't have to move out of her space. She doesn't have to open her home to me which is great for the landowner and for, for the tiny home dweller. There are definitely limitations with parking <laughs> and it's definitely something that holds a lot of people back. It did hold, hold me back for a really long time. I posted that I was looking on Nextdoor. I posted that I was looking on Craigslist. I was trolling Craigslist almost daily trying to find a place to park uh, right up until the house arrived. Every space in a tiny house doesn't have to get used, but it's really helpful if it does. And one of the quintessential things that tiny homes are known for are storage stairs. So the stairs into the gooseneck, even though it's not as many as if it was going into a main loft, it's still great storage. And I use these bottom ones for shoe storage, which is great because it's right next to the door. I can grab them, put them on and, and leave. And that means that I don't have a bunch of shoes cluttering up my entryway. And in this second one, I have more shoes, but it's not quite as filled. Uh, I actually ended up with more storage than I thought I needed. These bottom two are two steps deep, and this top one is one deep. And then that whole back area there is actually opened from the outside of the house, and it's where the propane tanks are stored. I didn't want this bottom one to be as deep as it would be if it utilized all the space in the stairs. So I actually put a, a drawer into the bathroom. So the stairs are actually accessed from three different sides of the stairs. Let's go up and see my master bedroom. So this is the gooseneck part of the tiny house. The gooseneck trailer means that it comes up over the bed of the truck, which means that I can get a decent amount of head height here in this loft. So one of the most common ways that I see 
the gooseneck being used is to have a standing bedroom. And I wanted to also create that standing bedroom, but because I don't need so much headspace above my head when I'm sleeping, I opted instead of putting the bed actually in the gooseneck, I put it up in the loft. And what that does is that allows me to get out of bed and be able to stand up right away and get dressed. Having the bed here uh, allows me to only have a couple steps. So instead of a ladder to get into my bed, I have two steps that I walk up. And then I still have plenty of headspace. I felt like the best place to put the laundry machine rather than in the kitchen would be where I had my clothes. So right here I have my combo washer and dryer. It's a splendid uh, combo unit and vented. Vented seems to be the best way to get the good drying times. In these steps I have my laundry basket and then also the things that I need for laundry, uh, dryer balls, um, delicate bags, detergent. I wanted to make sure that the steps moved um, in case I wanted to uh, use the space differently and that came in handy uh, because I can use this area, push this out of the way, as a standing desk. And then sometimes I will work from here if I want to change it up a little bit. Also, if I'm sorting laundry, I'll generally pull the laundry out, stick it on here or the bed, and then I can, instead of leaning over the steps, I can just stand here and sort my laundry. This is Poppy. <laughs> She's my other tiny house dweller. We had a crate here, but she has graduated from crate to the big dog bed. I actually wanted to make sure that I could fit any size dog because I actually didn't have her when I moved in. I actually had a large black lab boxer mix. And so I made sure that this space could hold a crate big enough for a large dog. But then when we found Poppy and she just kind of fit perfectly. Uh, in this cabinet, have all the linens. It's a nice big door to kind of hide everything and make it seem simpler than it is, but we've got all kind of sweaters, uh, towels, extra sheets, blankets for when it's cold, and it all just fits in here and hides away. And this whole wall is actually closet, which is great. Um, I didn't pare down when I went tiny because I only ever lived in a bedroom and didn't really have any furniture and so I built this house to contain everything that I had. And so I have all of my um, off-season clothes up here and then everything from t-shirts to workout clothes to socks and scarves. And it's actually quite deep so these bins actually don't go all the way to the back so I can actually store more off-season or infrequently used items behind the bins. So I'm a very visual person and so I've found that I'm not going to wear it if I don't see it. And I used this great shelving system to display all the jewelry that I wear uh, so that I can see it. This is actually designed similar to uh, some inspiration that I saw in another house that had these shelves next to their closet. And what I, I asked Mitch, I said, can we put this instead of a door? Because this actually, the whole thing moves. And then I have all of my hanging clothes on this side, along with um, some extra storage. And then also my full length mirror, which isn't hanging because I don't have the wall space for it. But what I typically do is I'll take it and put it standing up on one of the steps and then it's exactly the right height to be able to see um, the whole outfit. I'm not trying to skirt the system. I want to contribute to society. I want to contribute to my community. I want to be a part of it. I don't want to be nomadic. 
but I've found the only way that I can do that here in the Bay Area in a way that makes me happy is in this tiny house. It's a way that I can affordably own something that is mine and something that I can take care of and it also doesn't take up a lot of space. I am one person. I don't need 1,800 square feet. I don't need 900 square feet. This is all I need and I just need a place to park it. And I want to do that legally because I want to contribute to my community. I want to contribute to society. I'm not trying to skirt the system. It's just the system hasn't accepted me yet. And I want to help the system understand what it looks like to live tiny. Thank you for watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Patreon for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Thanks again to Trade Coffee for sponsoring this video.